Day one of Indian Wells, we have the pleasure of welcoming in the tournament director, former world number two, Tommy Haas. Always great to see you, Tommy. Likewise, great to see you guys. And uh, we are getting ready to go for an exciting day one here. You've been doing this for a while now, Tommy. And uh, listen, this year we, we've got some players coming back, like Novak Djokovic, Rafa Nadal, Naomi Osaka. We've got new stars as well. What are you most excited about for this year's tournament? Yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, the lineup, the stars are here is, is incredible. Um, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. You just set the order of play today. A couple of Grand Slam champions, uh, you know, starting off with Angelique Kerber, uh, you know, um, which is nice to see her back after, you know, having a baby and trying to sort of see where she can go, um, you know, and reach her heights again in the tennis world. Uh, Andy Murray out there getting another, you know, good player, Goffin, who went to the qualifying here. So we're going to see lots of uh, amazing tennis right from the start and have seen some really good tennis the last couple of days already in the qualifying as well. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see, can Sinner kind of continue the run? He's undefeated so far this year. Um, had the pleasure to play some balls with him, uh, you know, about a week ago. And the way he's striking the ball, um, you can kind of sense this, uh, this feeling of, uh, you know, confidence. You know, confidence is something you can't buy, as you know, and it's a beautiful feeling and you can kind of feel that aura about him. Uh, Alcaraz, I think the conditions here for him as a defending champion, he's going to be, I think, trying to make some noise coming back here. You know, he hasn't really had the start of the year that he was expecting. So I think we, let's watch out and see how he's doing. Pretty good draw as well. Of course, we all want to see Rafa. Uh, how is he doing? He hasn't played in a while. We know he's been battling with some injuries. Just recently played a match a couple of days ago in Vegas. Let's see how he recovers from that or how he's feeling. And then we have back Novak Djokovic on the men's side, you know, five-time champion here. He's super excited to be back. Hasn't been here since 2019. Yep. So, um, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. And we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we haven't even <laughs> talked about, so much. We haven't talked about the going, Americans. Tommy, yeah, we haven't going. talked about the Americans yet, right? I mean, Ben Shelton last night looked uh, super sharp already yeah. in the tiebreak tens. Got Tommy Paul, Taylor Fritz, who loves it here. Uh, and I'm sure there's a couple other floaters that are missing right now. And then on the women's side, we have so many former champions here as well, former world number ones, some young girls qualifying here yesterday, which is great to see. Um, so even on that side, it's like, who do you pick? You know, got to go with Sviantek, who's done well here. Zabalenka, who's having a great start. Rybakina, who's the defending champion. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. You guys are the experts. Well, I mean, listen, Tommy, you, you got all these great big names here. You're still hitting the ball pretty good. What about a little wild card, maybe? You and Yannick? What do you think? Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't love doubles that much, and uh, you know, I would, I would, I would love to still play a little bit in the singles, but you know, we would have to change the rules. You know, I feel like that. You know, striking the ball. You know, he's kind enough to hit it up the middle against me here. Um, that still works. That's still fun. I still get hyped up about that. It's one of my the favorite things I still enjoy doing. I always feel like I get a little bit of a workout in because I do have a sweet tooth. So that's a great thing on top of that. You're moving good, Tommy. Yeah, not too bad. Goodness. You know, look. I think if you give me about four weeks, a good physio, the right, you know, hitting uh, possibilities, and we play one set, I don't know, I think I can still hang pretty good, and, uh, you know, but I'm not getting any younger, so we'll have to be sooner than later. Look, tell me, you see some beautiful rallies between you guys there, and, and look, there's been a lot of tweets on social media, the balls can get big here with the rough courts, so you'll get some really long, entertaining rallies from these sensational athletes. Was that a conscious decision to sort of uh, try to have longer points here? I don't think it's a conscious decision, to be honest. You know, I mean, it's been the same ball for, for many, many, many years. Um, you know, you're always going to have some people that enjoy the ball, they don't enjoy the ball. There's been speculation of what the ATP or WTA should be doing, you know, long term, you know, maybe have one ball for the entire year. For us, what's most important is, is that we find a quality ball, right? And Penn assures us that they're giving us the best quality ball that they have. Yeah. I actually come out here quite a lot to, to try and test balls, test the speed of the court. Uh, court's faster than it was last year, that's, wow. I can tell you that. And when the balls are really new, and as you know, a little bit of altitude, the ball really goes through the air faster here too, so it's actually quite fast. Hmm. And then of course, the court's a little bit gritty, so when you have these longer rallies, the ball puffs up a little bit. Not sure if they're using the same material over in Taiwan where they make the balls or not. Uh, haven't gone there yet to check it out. <laughs> but um, it's, a, it's a little bit of hit or miss. I mean, you know, some players, you'd be surprised, love the ball. Some players obviously will say something. You know, and when you're a player, I'm a former player, you know, you're always going to find something to complain about. Um, you know, I will protect a little bit. I think Francis Tiafo, who said this is tennis is maybe one of the toughest sports, if not the toughest mm -hmm. sport. And I think one of the things people don't realize is, you know, they just are coming from Dubai, maybe from Acapulco, you know, now they're in Indian Wells. It plays different every week. They go to Miami, then they go to Europe. You play on clay. Of course, we're so lucky to be here in tennis paradise. We have this amazing weather, so nothing to worry about there. Maybe a little shade, depending on what time you play. Yep. But those are all little things, details you have to worry about all the time. Do I play at 12 o'clock? Do I play at 4 o'clock? Mm. Maybe 8 p.m. Once the sun sets, it's cooler. Ball play, reacts differently to that. So you have to adjust. You can, you know, and you can complain all you want, but the, the best thing to do is at least figure it out, find a solution.
Yeah, that's tennis, right? You got problem solved the entire way. Great intel, by the way. Court's yeah. playing a little faster this year. We saw that beautiful one-handed backhand when you're hitting with the Onyx Center. You're part of that original one-handed backhand boys band, right? Back in the <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah. We now have, for the first time in history, no one-handers in the top ten. What was your reaction to that? It's sad. No, it, it is sad. I think we were just having a conversation uh, last night. I was watching with uh, Radek Stepanek, Tomas Berdych, and Ivan Lubicic, actually, the tiebreak tens. And we were talking about the one-handed backhands. And then we would go back in the rankings when they first came out, I think in 72 or 73, we were thinking, wait, there must have been, like, more one-handers, right? I think back in, like, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, there was only one-handers. And then I think Jimmy Connors was maybe, like, one of the first, and then Bjorn Borg, and then they kind of changed it up. And here we are in this time where, you know, you don't see one one-handed back in the top 10 in the men's tennis. That's not okay. Um, you know. I think uh, we need to, um, you know, sign a petition and, uh, and and make sure that all around the world that at least a couple of kids that are playing the sport have to play uh, with a one-handed backhand. But no, it's it's just probably a phase. Tsitsipas will be in the top 10, I think, uh, at some point again. I think he's looking good. He's eager to get back there. Dimitrov is sort of, uh, you know, not far away. Um, but, you know, another discussion to be had at some point, uh, the argument is, is it two-handed? easier or better than a, than a one-handed backhand and uh, you know obviously you know my answer but uh, it's um, yeah it's it's a shot that that helps uh, a lot especially in the return and playing big powerful tennis with the two hands well look it certainly does help on the return but style points are style points and Tommy you know when you when you were when you were flicking that thing that was a beautiful backhand that you had so today is there anyone that can maybe match up on the style on the one one-handed backhand maybe a Musetti Shapovalov what do we think yeah, I mean, usually all the one-handers that uh, you just mentioned as well, or even from the past, or some that are still playing, I mean, they're all pretty pretty spectacular one-handers, right? Gasquet is right up there, obviously. Stan Wawrinka has a beautiful one. Roger had a beautiful one-handed backhand. And then you, uh, you know, for me, I, I would sort of, you know, dissect the one-handed backhand a little bit here and there. And even Tsitsipas, in my opinion, has a pretty good one-handed backhand. But I would help him and, and, and try to teach a, a couple of other scenarios for him in order to improve that backhand. I, you know, if I would play against him, it's, some, it's a shot that I wouldn't be so afraid of mm. going up against him, right? I mean, he's an amazing athlete, and when his serve is on and his forehand is on, that's how he dictates play. But uh, the backhand, you know, I feel like if I can be in the rally, and I think maybe other opponents know, notice that too, if he can kind of flatten that thing out a little bit or step into it a little bit more, maybe use the slice a little bit differently, um, you know, I think you have to start to improve that, as we saw Roger do so mm. well, right? You know, you know, Rafa was always, you know, just spinning it up high to the back end, and then Roger at times was like, "Listen, I gotta figure out a way to take it a little bit earlier, maybe get a bigger racket head, and uh, and step into it." And one particular match that I never forget is when Rafa played uh, Roger here. I think it was in maybe in 19, yeah. uh, in the quarterfinals or something. And uh, you know, I mean, Roger just took that back end so early, and I think it's one of the matches where he must have played. One of the best matches of all time, especially here, um, but with the back end for sure. I mean, he was taking it early off the return, like uh, just, uh, you know, half volleying it from the baseline, hitting winners left and right. It was like a clinic. We need to hear every day, Tommy. I mean, this <laughs> breakdown is sensational. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Have a wonderful tournament. Thanks for welcoming us back into Tennis Paradise, and we'll see you around the grounds. Great to see you. Let me know when you want me back. All right. All right.